Welcome and thanks for joining us. My guest today is Drew Ferment, the Chief Cloud Strategist at Pluralsight. Drew, good to have you back with us. Oh, it's great to be here, Tom. Thank you. And our topic today is uh, looking at the future of cloud because we are on the cusp of calendar 2025. What are the emerging technologies, trends? What do you see ahead for cloud? What's going to have the biggest impact on federal agencies? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get my crystal ball out here, Tom. Um, you know, I think uh, we are spending a lot of time with federal agencies right now, um, and we're witnessing firsthand there's a pretty big skills gap uh, that's going on uh, with, with their ability to deliver on, on their mission. So, And a lot of spend is going into public cloud. I think it's like 20% year-over-year growth, a um, trillion dollars expected by the end of the decade, some ridiculous numbers. Um, and a lot of that is actually being accelerated by AI. So, we, you know, uh, we're going to be uh, uh, winning some folks some points on their bingo card with, with the AI buzzwords here. Um, but we're still seeing a lot of cloud migrations delayed, um, uh, projects being abandoned because of skills gap and not being able to deliver on their mission simply because of a lack of skills. So uh, I spend a lot of time and our team spends a lot of time with leaders connecting, you know, those skills to agency outcomes using Pluralsight as that platform to, to scale uh, skills development. But there are um, some emerging trends that we're seeing, Tom, going into, into 2025 and, you know, some opportunities for, for uh, government agencies to prepare for them. So I think the first one is this really not surprising uh, that 75% of federal CIOs are expecting AI to have a really significant impact on their uh, government operations over the next five years. So I don't think that's too much of a surprise, but they're still in the early stages of adoption. Um, and I know you're probably uh, feeling that as well, Tom, when you're talking to folks. Um, and in 2025, you're seeing most of these um, uh, goals are tied to some of these like low risk use cases going on. So AI is definitely getting a lot of the attention, but I think that uh, what I'm seeing is that organizations are really missing the prerequisite to unlocking the value, which is the underlying data readiness. So, you know, we, we hear a lot about AI, but it's really these large language models that feed generative AI that are really dependent upon the quality of the organization's data. Um, and recently, I was listening to um, the CIO, uh, it was Terry Carpenter uh, from, from NSF, who was saying that, um, you know, really emphasized that that data has to be ready for AI. It's like the tag tagging, the cataloging, the transformation of data. That's really that data layer is really what's necessary for, for each agency. So, uh, yeah, so at this point, it's, it's no surprise that a lot of agencies are struggling uh, to get their Gen AI uh, projects beyond the pilot phases. Um, so I think going sure. into 2025, there needs to be a lot of focus on uh, gathering and securely governing that data. And you mentioned earlier there's a scarcity of skills needed in the government for cloud, and there's probably scarcity of artificial intelligence skill, and all of this has to be integrated somehow, cloud plus AI. This sounds like it could be a risk. So there's a lot of uh, integration of generative AI services. Um, it's going to be a, a you know big a big priority, um, but there's a lot of folks that took shortcuts with their transition to cloud computing, like the lift and shift type of migrations. So that's where we're seeing a little bit more of the higher cost, poor performance, and a, and a big focus on security. But a lot of that is they just took existing vulnerabilities and moved them in, into the cloud. So. You know, there, there's the risk of AI is little to do with the services themselves and more to do with some of the shaky cloud computing foundations. So there's going to be a, a little bit of a step back before to be able to take those steps forward with investments in those cloud computing skills, um, you know, in order to take full advantage of, of, of AI. And do you think some of the cloud skills people have now could become obsolete as the AI comes in? Um, you would think listening to uh, some of the, uh, the the folks out there that, yeah, cloud is done, you know, check check the box and, and we're good to go. But uh, again, we're still in the early stages of, of cloud computing um, and we're still trying to build a workforce that's literate in the foundational skills. Um, so until you reach that critical mass of, of cloud fluency, 
um, there's going to be very few cloud skills that are going to be obsolete in two, 2025. So I do think, though, the emergence of generative AI is creating this new demand for for in the in the workforce. But you know, here's the situation with AI skills. It's like nine in ten execs say they don't completely don't have a complete understanding of their team's AI proficiency. So right now, you just don't know what you don't know. And a lot of IT professionals tend to overestimate their AI skills. I think eighty-one percent said that they express like confidence, but only twelve percent have hands-on skills. Right, and um, and you know, and as a result, you have very few agencies that have a formal you know AI training program at this place uh, at this point in place for their their entire agency. And of course, this whole growth of data and data readiness brings with it an evolving landscape, you might say, of data privacy, security, and so forth. There's presidential orders keep coming out on all of these areas. Somehow there's an architecture to it all. And so how do you think that's going to shape cloud computing practices and by the same token, service offerings? Spot on, Tom. I mean, that, that is a, a, a huge focus. Um, and so these these generative AI models just require a massive amounts of data, right? And a lot of that data is unstructured and ungoverned. Um, and a lot of agencies just don't have that modern data strategy. And and they're they're frankly they're not ready for the complexity and the operational demands of of AI workloads at this point. So, you know the 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 quality and integrity of that underlying data, it generates outcomes that, you know, you hear about hallucinations, but those basically that means they're unreliable, unpredictable, outdated. And that's really where the significant risk comes from. Um, and you, you have to start, uh, you know, data management and AI, you know, are not mutually exclusive. They need to be joined together at the hip, right? So, um, yeah, you're going to have an increased scrutiny on on uh, generative AI, um, especially with increased regulatory and compliance, you know, concerns in, in 2025, right? But um, that's going to, I think, drive much more service offerings from the cloud providers around like data compliance as a service. So, I mean, you're going to be able to have to make that easier for for agencies to be able to consume AI, specifically the the, the underlying data readiness component. Yeah, so really consuming AI is tantamount to consuming data, and therefore the protections have to really be in place as they get fed into these new systems with the new algorithms. Yeah, spot on. And it's really interesting, Tom, because, you know, AI is getting a lot of the, the love and attention from a, from a top three, you know, federal CIO priority. Uh, where data management isn't necessarily getting the love, right? It's not as it's not as glamorous, um, but they're they're intrinsically tied together. So you really shouldn't be doing one without the other. Like, do not pass go and collect your two hundred dollars with AI without having a really strong uh, data foundation in, in place. And you've got an interesting perch on the industry, providing training and education that agencies are demanding for cloud. So you must be hearing from government customers what they're planning to do in the cloud and what their goals are, because that would then lead to their proceeding with the training to be able to get their people to reach those goals. So what, what are the demand signals you're seeing? Yeah, it's interesting, uh, Tom, that it's it's a really a tale of two agencies, right? Um, and it's separated by like this divide of maturity. So you on the one hand, you have these some very disciplined agencies and organizations that have spent the past several years, if not longer, investing in those cloud native practices and skills, right? Um, and I think that those leaders are going to be focused much more on leveraging that solid foundation as a springboard and be able to move forward with some of their generative AI solutions and their, their proof of concepts and, and moving them forward to 2025. On the other hand, the other side of that chasm, right? You have agencies that maybe took a few shortcuts, uh, you know, lift and shifted or containerized uh, their existing practices to move it over to the cloud for some some quick wins, and they're and they're they're paying the price right now. Um, so I think as we head into 2025, those leaders, they're going to be the ones having to prioritize things like cost control and cloud security as a result of those initial tactical migrations. I don't think that they'll make much headway on their strategic uh, initiative. So any aspirations for like 
large scale generative AI initiative is going to have to remain in that backlog um, as our teams try to sprint to, to transition from those legacy workloads to, to more cloud native architectures. Yeah, the implication of all this is that if you look at cloud as the beginning of a journey instead of at the end of a journey of getting your data strategy in place, getting your regulations and controls and compliance mechanisms in place for your data and really ferreting out those vulnerabilities, then going to the cloud, that's a whole different backwards approach being corrected so that you do the right things first. Yeah, I think, you know, I think to, to your point, Tom, um, you know, the, 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 my, there's a migration to the cloud and there's a transformation tied to cloud. And, you know, migration tends to focus on taking your apps and moving them, you know, from a private data center to a public, you know, cloud to, to, to make that a little bit easier where a transformation really extends to other practices, your development practices, your data management practices, your security practices, and it's new methodologies for doing things. So if you skip over the transformational elements, um, you know, you're really not taking full advantage of, of cloud. And it's gonna be harder to take advantage of things like generative AI and other future developments as well. And looking at the way people will be hosting, I mean, cloud mm -hmm. first, now we have cloud smart. Do you think hybrid? The multi-cloud hybrid, I mean, what, what do you see as the trends and how people will go about all of this and what the mix will be? Yeah, I think, you know, I'm, I have a, some some bias on this just from from, from my experience, but I, I do think the optimal hosting model is to be all in on a single cloud provider. I think that's the way to get stuff done. Um, and the, but the reality is, I think a lot of agencies are going to be managing uh, a hot mess of combinations of uh, their, their private, um, you know, data centers with uh, a few different cloud providers um, and, and using containers to try to abstract between uh, those. So it becomes a, a lot to manage. Uh, as a result of that, you see such an emphasis on uh, security because that creates a lot of uh, potential vulnerabilities because your surface area is, is, is fairly broad. So, um, so again, well, I think single cloud providers, I think are the ideal approach. Um, you know, you avoid sort of draining your talent and your value. The sprawl I think is still gonna be prevalent and it's gonna be difficult to unwind some of that. So um, yeah, I mean, you know, organizations are using the containers to kind of manage porting their applications, um, but, you know, I think where the realization is going to come in uh, is that it's really difficult to ring fence your data in the same way you've done with your applications. And as you really put this emphasis on data to drive generative AI, you're going to have a little bit more of that data gravity to single sort of providers. I think that that's going to be the trend as folks realize, like, you really have to be able to centralize and govern that data in order to effectively use AI. And I think that that's going to start consolidating the cloud provider uh, conversation as well. Right. So you can really reduce the complexity of having multiple clouds, have greater assurance that what you want done will happen, and maybe even increase your leverage in negotiating, I would think. Yeah. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you're really just trying to get your mission accomplished, uh, you know, on behalf of the constituents that your your agency is 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 working, uh, you know, for. And, um, you know, there's a lot of undifferentiated heavy lifting that goes into managing uh, a lot of different environments and a lot of different cloud providers. Um, and you're you're much more likely to, you know, reap the benefits of of, of cloud and delivering results when you have uh, less, you know, unnecessary complexity to be dealing with. All right. So it all comes down to people that know what they're doing. Ultimately, you need the right talent to be able to leverage the right technology. What do you think agencies can do to make sure that IT workforce is really equipped with what it has to do in terms of skills to, to, uh, to get to this future you envision? Or they yeah, this is where I ended up. You know, I, I have a lot of passion for this. I spent a lot of time, you know, figuring out you know, what, what are we doing in our business and where do we want to go? And then, you know, the, how do we get there in terms of, you know, cloud or the technology and measuring, you know, when we're going to get there in terms of maturity. Well, ultimately it came down to, hey, who's going to do the work, right? Uh, it's not about technology at the end of the day. It's about, it's about the people. And that's why I, I'm on a mission to teach people how to cloud and, and, and certainly uh, I'm, I'm really excited to be part of Pluralsight and what we offer to these agencies. Um, and there's really kind of three elements uh, that, that we bring to the table that I think it's important, you know, regardless of the platform that you're using, that you, you think about 
um, your, your sort of where are you now in terms of your benchmarking and your assessment? It's very similar to doing a migration, right? What do you have? Where do you want to go? And, and how do you get there? So the first one is when you look at your skills inventory, a plural set has a skills IQ. So it helps you to go ahead and, and measure where you are, what's your aptitude, individual aptitude in terms of, you know, whether it's AI, programming languages, cloud computing, whatever the case might be. And that's going to help understand not only at the individual level, but you can also aggregate that up to the organizational level. So when you like want to say, well, where do we want to go? I could have a, let's just say, a cloud engineering role that might have multiple different skills. So then I can say, well, where are my gaps? So that's really important first step to really understand, you know, where am I, right? At this point, we even mentioned, like, do you even know what the aptitude is with generative AI within your agency? Well, no, <laughs> you know, and a lot of engineers are gonna say, oh, I'm really good at that. You know, that's, they probably think that they know a lot more than they know, and that's a hazard, right? So, so the first thing is, you know, a skill IQ or, or inventory of, of that, have a really clear understanding of your starting point. The second one is, what's your path to get there? So, you know, not everybody's going to start at the same level. So, the, you know, the goal is once you have a skills IQ, it's going to put you at the appropriate starting level, whether it's a 100 level, 200 level. But you, you have a personalized learning path from, it's just like migrations, right? You're going to migrate, you're going to refactor, replatform, rehost, whatever for, for, for cloud computing. Same thing with, with skills. So you want to make it clear in terms of how to get from your skill IQ of zero to hero. So here's a path forward. And those are those should be personalized for you. The last and the most important to me is the hands-on experiential learning. Um, you know, it's one thing to, to, to talk about. It's another thing to walk the walk, right? So, you know, we, we employ uh, hands-on uh, labs and sandboxes as part of our experience. So when you're on that path, the learning and doing becomes one and the same. So that's a kind of a practical approach to to helping employees uh, not only build skills, but you're building confidence, right? You're not just sort of getting a certification or, you know, whatever the case might be, but you're, you're also building stuff and you can start then extrapolating that and applying that to the mission ahead of you. So uh, I think the combination of those things uh, really equips uh, the, the workforce within the federal government with those tools to be able to, to deliver on that mission. Right. So as you keep track of what your cloud assets are and where you want to be in terms of your cloud hosting and what goes where, you also have to keep track of your talent and where the skills gaps are and where you need to go to make sure those are filled properly. That's that's exactly right. I always say, I, I you know, Tom, I, I wish I had spent more time migrating talent to the cloud than applications to the cloud. Right. So. Again, it, it, it's not about technology, it's about people. Uh, I mean, who's gonna do the work? So, you know, you need to be investing as much in, in, in your talent as you are in your technology. And I think that when agencies are, are doing that in a more programmatic and comprehensive manner, they're gonna start getting a much higher return on their investments with cloud and data and, and ultimately with AI as well. All right, good note to leave it on. It's great to have you with us. My guest has been Drew Ferment the Chief Cloud Strategist at Pluralsight. Drew, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Tom. And I'm Federal Drive host Tom Temin. You're watching Federal News Network. Let's go back to the studio now for more on the industry exchange cloud.